In 2015, humans began their first colony on the moon. In 2032, human commercial activities began on planet Mars. The launch of a research spacecraft followed the extraordinary achievement called Event Horizon in 2040. The spaceship would explore the farthest limits of the solar system. After passing Neptune, the ship disappeared during its maiden voyage, and its crew was presumed lost, making it the worst failure in all of space travel. Seven years passed, and in 2047, it reappeared in a decaying orbit around Neptune. The rescue ship Lewis and Clark was dispatched to investigate a secret mission. The crew was led by Captain Miller, along with a professor of physics expert on spaceships named Dr. William Weir. The journey was quite far, and they would sleep in a hypersleep pod. After two months of spaceship travel, they finally arrived at Neptune, but strangely, only William was awakened. In the silence, there was a voice calling. William began to look around to see whether there was someone there. Then, in the control room, he saw his wife Claire sitting without eyeballs startling him, and it turned out that William was having a strange dream. The other crew members immediately helped him after being awakened from a hypersleep pod. The captain then asked his crew to hurry up because, in the next two hours, their plane would reach the orbit of Neptune. Captain Miller introduced his crew to William because William was the only passenger outside of his members. Its crew was Captain Miller, second-in-command Lieutenant Stark, Pilot Smith, Medical Technician Peters, Engineer Ensign Justin, Dr. DJ, and Rescue Technician Cooper. Captain Miller then invited William to tell him exactly what the purpose of this mission was because since departing from Earth, they had only been told that this mission was top secret and would only be revealed after reaching Neptune. William informed that scientists detected a transmission signal from the Event Horizon. Event Horizon was a starship that lost communication about seven years ago. The Event Horizon was designed for faster-than-light travel using a mysterious and experimental dimension warping engine known as the Gravity Drive. Of course, no one would believe the arena based on the laws of relativity. No object could move beyond the speed of light. The spaceship did not exceed the speed of light. However, the machine was equipped with technology that could open a dimensional gate that allowed instantaneous jumps from one place to another that was light years away. Scientists used the rotation of magnetic fields to concentrate gravitational waves and eventually create a time fold in space. With that technique, an object could reach one place in a moment. The scientist who created the technology was none other than William himself, as well as the designer of the design of the Event Horizon spaceship. They disappeared moments after the Event Horizon dimensional gateway to the proximal century. For seven years, no one knew where the spacecraft was until they picked up a transmission emitted from an object in orbit around Neptune. In the information, the sound of the crew screaming was heard. Dr. DJ listened to a sentence asking to be rescued uttered in the recording. So their mission was to go to the Event Horizon and investigate what happened there. Event Horizon ship was found to be in the uppermost layer of the atmosphere of the planet Neptune. Stark began scanning the power source. Event Horizon was still detected, so the spaceship kept floating in space. There was no sign of living people inside, but strangely, Stark saw traces of life throughout the ship, which was absurd. They had no choice but to go inside to find out what happened. The captain then asked William and some crew to stay behind to monitor them through the control room because only he knew the ins and outs of the giant ship. After ensuring the situation was safe, they were allowed to go inside. Once inside, they used magnetic boots to walk in the room without gravity easily. Captain Miller then asked Justin to go to the engine room while he and Peters would go to the front to find a way to switch on the primary power source. Miller and Peters then got to the medical room. They found no one there and even the room looked like it had never been used. Justin was now in the engine room. He reported that the coolant in the engine room was leaking and that's where he found the gravity regulator created by Dr. William, which was the heart of the Event Horizon spaceship. William then guided Peters to find the central control room. No signs of life were there, but he saw dried blood spots. Peters found a CD that was thought to be the plane's diary. Suddenly, Peters was startled by a corpse hovering behind him. The corpse looked significantly damaged with a poked-out eyeball. Judging from its condition, it could not have been caused by air pressure, maybe by an animal or something else. Then, in the engine room, Justin detected traces of life, but strangely, there was no sign of anyone there. The gravity machine turned on a moment later, and their communication was cut off. Justin felt something strange about the blob of liquid in the center of the ring. The ship's gravity drive activated and briefly pulled Justin into a portal. Justin disappeared inside, and then there was an energy explosion. Even the aircraft they were using was also damaged by the energy wave. There was a leak in the hull. The crews were all forced to board the Event Horizon. Meanwhile, Cooper immediately headed to the engine room to help Justin. Then, in a central control room, Peter saw that the resources were still quite a lot. 
he immediately turned it on so that the life bender system and artificial gravity would function again. But unfortunately, the CO2 filter machine was not functioning optimally. They could still breathe for 20 hours with the remaining oxygen available. Inevitably, they must repair the plane so they can go home immediately. Smith then reported a large hole in the hull, and it looked like it would take them a long time to patch it up. After helping Justin, Cooper took him to the medical room. They saw his vital signs were stable, but Justin was stunned and didn't react. Cooper recounted what he saw when he rescued him. At first, there was nothing there, but mysteriously, Justin suddenly appeared, and strangely, the liquid in the middle of the gravity ring suddenly turned solid. William said that it was physically impossible. He assumed Cooper was having hallucinations or optical effects caused by the gravitational distortion in the room. William then pointed out that an artificial black hole is created when the three magnetic rings come together. The amount of energy produced can create time folds in space. That should allow the event horizon to go anywhere in a short time. This gravity machine was harmless, but the captain disagreed. That thing had made Justin lose consciousness and damage his plane, so this place should be sealed, and no one should be allowed to enter there. Meanwhile, while Peters was monitoring Justin's condition at the medical center, he heard a whimpering sound. Peters then looked for the sound source from the object covered in green cloth. There, he saw a hand moving. When he opened it, Peters was surprised to see his son sitting with legs covered in bloody lesions. Dr. DJ approached him, and the child he saw disappeared instantly. It looked like Peters just had hallucination. After that, they all gathered to watch the video recording of the Horizon Event Crew Diary. They discovered a video log of the Event Horizon's crew fornicating and mutilating each other shortly after first engaging the gravity drive. In the video, their captain said that Event Horizon was opening a dimensional gate to the proximal century. Then, a moment later, the recording broke down and they began to hear the crew's screams. At the same time, the power in the spaceship was disrupted and it seemed to come from the gravity regulator, maybe caused by a short circuit. William would check it out. Then, in the medical room, Justin showed strange symptoms of his body shaking. For a moment, Justin woke up and said something about darkness to Dr. DJ. In the gravity machine room, William finally found a faulty electronic circuit. Suddenly, he heard a whispered voice calling him. A woman without eyeballs suddenly appeared, none other than his wife. Meanwhile, Captain Miller also saw someone appear burning from the water in front of the gravity ring. After the repair, they gathered and told the events they had just experienced. DJ and William said the increased CO2 could have caused someone to hallucinate. William also felt that what he had seen before was just an illusion. Still, Miller and Peters denied it, saying that what they had seen was an illusion. Smith felt that this spaceship was cursed and that they shouldn't have come here. Stark then asked for a one-on-one -on -one talk with Miller. According to his analysis, there seemed to be a connection between the traces of life he moved and the hallucinations. He felt that this number ship reacted to their arrival. Event Horizon seemed to have invisible inhabitants and made it a haunted spaceship. Then the captain said he would see Smith, who was repairing their ship. Meanwhile, in the medical room Justin, who was previously lying asleep, suddenly disappeared somewhere. Peters then told the others, and suddenly, the alarm went off. They saw that Justin was already in the air cabin. Within 30 seconds, the air in the cabin would be decompressed, and because of that, the inner door was automatically locked. It was hazardous because Justin was not wearing an astronaut suit when the decompression took place suddenly. Justin regained consciousness. Then he asked his colleagues to open the door, but unfortunately, it was too late. The outer door opened, and his body could not withstand the pressure. Fortunately, the outside captain was on guard to bring him in. Justin's condition was critical, but they temporarily stopped the bleeding. Peters then told the others that Justin had said something earlier. The captain then asked William where the dimension gate had taken Event Horizon. William said that he didn't know and he needed time to think. Again, Captain Miller experienced hallucinations, and after regaining consciousness, Captain Miller realized what was happening. The figure he saw before was his old comrade-in-arms, whom he had left to die in the flames. Then he told DJ that the hallucinations he saw were events he had experienced before. Miller felt that this spaceship knew his fear and then created hallucinations. All these oddities happened after they got here. It seemed that what Stark said was true, that this ship was alive and reacted to their arrival. DJ then played back the recording that William had listened to earlier. The log ended with a shot of the Event Horizon's captain, holding his eyes goged from their sockets and speaking the Latin phrase from the earlier distress call. DJ translated the complete phrase as Libera T. Tutmet Ex Inferus, Save Yourself From Hell. The words in the recording were not asking to be saved, but to save yourself. 
Suppose it was confirmed that this Earth could open dimensional gates. In that case, this spaceship might have gone beyond the universe's boundaries that science could reach. No one knew where they had gone, including what they had brought here after returning. Smith then reported that the aircraft was almost finished being repaired. They only needed to patch one more hole, and then the aircraft could be used to return home. Stark asked the captain to come to the control room, who showed him the last video footage of Event Horizon. The video clearly showed that the crew went wild and attacked each other. It answered how the bodies of the corpses they found to be badly damaged. The captain then asked the team to return to the aircraft immediately because the repairs were finished and they were going home. However, William refused because he still had to find answers to what was happening there. Suddenly, there was an energy reaction inside the spaceship. Stark Life Detection Device reported that the source of the energy surge came from the gravity engine room, and it seemed like the room was flooding the entire ship with its power. Meanwhile, Peters and Smith were still retreating the CO2 filter device in the gravity engine room. Smith did not want to linger in that place and asked Peter to catch up with him immediately. Suddenly, Peters saw the shadow of a small child running around in the gravity machine. The young boy looked like his son then, and Peters followed wherever he went. Peter didn't seem to realize that he was being manipulated, and when he got closer to the little boy, Peters didn't see that the road before him was potholed and then fell. A moment later, the area entered there and then found Peters dead. Suddenly, William also experienced hallucinations. He was at the time his wife committed suicide several years ago. The hallucinations he saw didn't even make him gouge out his own eyes. After some time, while the crew was busy making preparations, Smith too saw that William had just got out of their plane. Smith then contacted the captain, who said that William had just left the aircraft but did not answer his call. The captain had a bad feeling because one of the explosives was missing. He was worried that William had brought it in and intended to detonate it. It was correct. William, who had gouged out his own eyes and was possessed by the evil presence, used an explosive device to destroy Lewis and Clark. Smith, who was inside, was immediately killed by the explosion. At the same time, Cooper, who was outside the aircraft, was thrown into space, but he managed to return to Event Horizon using his jet. William then came to DJ, who was alone in the medical room. Without further ado, William attacked him by vivisecting him. Miller thought William's actions were out of bounds and inevitably he must be killed. After taking the gun, Miller went looking for the start and found him injured from being attacked by William earlier, and it turned out that William was still in the room. William then reminded Miller that the event Horizon was a masterpiece that created him to go to the stars, but what happened was that this spaceship went further than that. Event Horizon tore the universe's boundaries and has gone to another dimension. In this dimension, there was only chaos and evil. To pass through the gate, Event Horizon was just a spaceship, but after returning, he was alive and well. William then activated the dimensional gate. In the next ten minutes, he would show Miller where this spaceship had gone. Suddenly, Stark attacked him, but it didn't work, then William dropped it. At the same time, the suitcase innocently floated closer to the window of the room. Then William shot a hook towards the window. It also made the window glass break and made whatever was inside sucked out. The crazy psychopath William was finally also thrown out of space because of his actions. Meanwhile, Miller and Stark managed to move to the next room and then closed the door to the room. Cooper used his spacesuit's oxygen supply to propel himself back to the ship and appeared at the bridge window. The captain then told the plane they would use the front of the aircraft as a lifeboat. To do so, they had to blow up the plane aisle first so the front of the aircraft could activate the evacuation procedure. The captain then asked Stark to prepare the hypersleep tube that was there and asked Cooper to try to send an emergency signal. If you're lucky, the rescue team won't pick them up. Meanwhile, he would go to the back to install explosives. After Cooper finished blaming the emergency signal, he saw blood flowing on it. At the same time, the glass tube in front of him suddenly turned red and then broke, flooding the room. Luckily, they were both okay. Stark then contacted the captain that the preparations were complete and asked him to go to the front immediately. After finishing installing the explosives and going back, Miller was attacked by a fiery human figure who suddenly appeared in front of him. Peters was cornered and then entered the gravity engine room to save himself. The figure turned out to be William. He looked like a human who the devil had possessed. Then he said that this spaceship would never let him go. Miller fought him off and detonated the explosives, sacrificing himself. The front of the spaceship automatically carried out the evacuation procedure. Meanwhile, the back of the aircraft where the gravity machine was located disappeared because William had previously activated the dimensional gate. They could have returned to the dimension that William had mentioned before. 72 days later, Event Horizon was finally found by the rescue team. They went inside and opened the start tube. The other two surviving crews were Justin and Stark. 
Then, the rescue officer opened his helmet, and the staff was immediately surprised to see that the person was William. But it turned out that Stark was having hallucinations. Cooper and a rescue team tried to calm the terrified Stark as the doors closed. So, what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below, and if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you in the next video.